Pod Squad. Welcome back to exploring the nine podiatric medical schools. We know this is a hot topic because all of you are wondering about the different schools. So today we're talking about Western University and we're featuring Branda. Branda is sweet, kind, graceful, smart. Honestly, we contacted her out of nowhere and she doesn't know us, we don't know her, but she was nice enough to do this for all of you. So without further ado, let's check out what she has to say. Thank you, Diksha and Yona, for having me on your channel. Hi, everyone. My name is Branda. I am a third year at Western University of Health Sciences, and today I'll be answering some of the um, most commonly asked questions or um, things prospective students want to know as they're choosing a podiatric medical school. The first question is, what is the area like? Western U itself is in the city of Pomona. It's in Southern California. Um, so this answer is uh, maybe more tailored to people who are from out of state or unfamiliar with the area. Pomona is about 40 minutes to an hour, give take from places that are um, stereotypically SoCal, so you know, the beach, Disneyland, uh, Los Angeles itself, so pretty close to all those things, and in terms of things to do, uh, things to eat, Pomona has a lot of really good Mexican food, but then there's also your typical, you know, Chick-fil-A, In-N-Out, Korean barbecue, you name it, we probably have it. There are tons of, you know, bars, clubs, music venues, um, some that are actually really close to campus too, some that are walking distance, so um, those are the places that students tend to hit up. Alright, the next question is, what is the living situation like? Um, so Western has three apartment complexes that are all on campus. So this is a great option for students who kind of just want to roll out of bed, uh, walk to class in less than two minutes. The one that is directly affiliated with the school is called the Damier. And um, this one tends to be a popular choice among students who want to live on campus because it is only intended for students and their partners or spouses or pets. Um, so it kind of fosters, I guess, this learning environment um, since it um, they only allow students to live there. I believe it is the priciest one. I remember when I was looking for a one bedroom, I think it was 1600 just for me, a one bedroom. Another place that I lived at and really liked on campus was called the Helix. Um, I got a roommate, so for um, a two bedroom, um, I paid a little over 800. It was a lot bigger than the other two places as well and just as close to um, the main building on campus. Obviously, those prices probably sound like nightmares for people <laughs> who are from um, out of state where rent is a lot cheaper. So there are cheaper options um, off campus um, where also a good amount of um, students live. Uh, while they're um, going through their didactic years. So neighboring cities like Chino Hills, Montclair, uh, Claremont are really popular options. Some people will get a um, house with a bunch of roommates, so um, that can take the rent down to as low as, six, low, <laughs> it's subjective, as um, uh, 600. So um, yeah, I'd say I guess it ranges anywhere from 600, depending on if you choose to have roommates, um, how far you are from campus, uh, things like that. All right, so the next question is, what are our class sizes? Uh, Western, I believe, caps how many students they see at 50. Our class is a little smaller than that, but um, I know the two classes below me, um, they only take 50. I know this sounds really um, like a small class size compared to other schools who maybe average about 100 students a year. Um, but this personally really worked out for me because um, our class was so small, we're so close, um, the sense of family is really strong, and um, personally, that's just uh, what I preferred. All right, what classes do you take your first year? So um, we don't have a semester system. Um, we do it in blocks and it's organized by organ system. Uh, the very first course you'll take is called ISOM and um, we all kind of describe it as like the MCAT course. <laughs> it felt like all the hardest science we took in our undergrad combined into four weeks. And um, it was necessary. And um, the reasoning behind it is, you know, everyone comes from a different school, a different major. This just kind of um, reorients everybody and gets us all in the same mindset before uh, we are thrown into medicine. After those four weeks end, you um, maybe they rearrange things now, but when I took it, it was musculoskeletal for a few weeks. Take a week of finals for it, and then you get a whole week where you kind of just go to workshops, listen to lectures that are just kind of for your learning and um, you know just kind of for you a time for you to uh, take a step back and take a break before we start the next block which is head and neck um, this one also goes for a few weeks and then you take it the final for that go on winter vacation and then come back and it was um, heart lungs kidney that they put together now this one was I think one of the longer blocks so this one I think was about six weeks maybe a little longer um, the reason they put these together is because they are um, really integrated systems. It 
just works out intuitively to learn it that way. Uh, spring break is somewhere in there, um, the final, and then um, we go into uh, reproductive uh, medicine. So we have what's called a two-pass system. The first year is kind of dedicated to all the normals, um, learning all the physiology, and then the second year is all the pathology. So um, it kind of gives you that repetition and um, worked out really well for me as a student. All right, the next question is, do you have research opportunities at your school? And um, yeah, we absolutely do. It's actually really easy to get into research. Um, our director of research on campus is Dr. Schaffler, and um, most students, or many students I should say, um, do research um, sometime within their first year into the summer after their first year. And we have what's called the um, Summer Research Symposium, where um, if you're done by then, you get a chance to either orally present um, your uh, you know, research or present a poster. Um, it's really fun, I did it, you get a stipend, and um, in terms of research topic, uh, you can come with your own idea, talk about it. Um, if you don't have your own idea, it's totally fine, um, no pressure, there are plenty of faculty members and professors who have really cool research projects in mind um, that are always looking for students to help them with. So um, yeah, all you have to do is um, pretty much ask and um, be willing and uh, yeah, you'll be able to do research. Okay, so the next question is, do you have clubs at your school and how active are they? We have a lot, a lot of clubs on campus. I believe twice a year, once in the fall, once in the spring, they have like, you know, the big club fair, same as you had in undergrad where all the clubs come out. Um, you sell a bunch of food, um, talk to you about uh, what the club is about, and um, yeah, you can sign up for it. Um, podiatry or the um, CPM itself has at least six uh, clubs from what I remember, and um, they are pretty active because throughout the year they'll put on a lot of different workshops, you know, like suture workshops, injections, taping, um, a bunch of really fun stuff that you get to participate in. So um, yeah, I'd recommend signing up for all those, honestly. The next question is, do you have a gym and a cafeteria located on campus? Um, no and no, but um, we have a partnership with LA Fitness where I believe it's like as little as 100 or $120 a year for um, in an LA Fitness membership. So um, I took advantage of that. I believe it ended up being $10 or less than $10 a month, really. Uh, you just pay it all at once and um, if LA Fitness um, isn't a gym you're interested in, they do reimburse you up to a certain amount um, if you wanted to uh, work out somewhere else. Um, as for the cafeteria, like I said, we don't have a cafeteria, but we do have a cafe that you know tells your, sells your typical um, grab-and-go items, um, some hot lunch items, um, Starbucks coffee, most importantly. Uh, yeah, plenty of places that you can also walk to from campus too that are probably within a five-minute walking distance. So the next question is, are there any academic support services for students? Um, absolutely. Uh, they're actually called LEAD and um, such an amazing uh, group of people there. They care so, so much. One of the coolest things that they can do for you as a student who is maybe struggling, um, is we take all our exams on a software on our computers and it actually keeps track of what you click. You can go to them if you're struggling, you know, if you did bad after a test. What they can do is sit down with you and open up the uh, software and it actually shows what you click. So if you have a trend where you'll click an answer and then change it to the wrong answer, they could let you know that and um, kind of modify how you learn. So it's not like you're going to this um, place uh, for advice on how to study better and they give you like general um, advice. Uh, they try to modify it and tailor it to you because they acknowledge that everybody learns differently. So that's really, really cool. Are there any counseling services for students? So it's actually um, located in the same um, part of campus. We have um, uh, Optum Health as uh, um, what we offer to students. It is five sessions that they offer for free. All you have to do is call a number and um, they send you a list of therapists or LMFTs um, in you know your area or especially with you know um, COVID happening right now, you can just do it uh, through your laptop, through um, telehealth. So that's really, really cool. And um, they give you five of those free sessions. The next question is, what is my favorite part about school? Uh, my favorite part is, I don't know if this is like a lame or cheap answer, but of course it's my um, classmates, my professors. There's ne never been a time where I've asked for help on something, whether it's school related or not, and somebody said no. <laughs> everyone is so helpful, um, so genuine, especially because you know everyone says life goes on as you're you know, a student and despite how rigorous it is, um, stuff's gonna happen and um, yeah, people are uh, really good here. All right, so the next question is, does the school have a special group to help spouses or family members acclimate to medical school? Uh, yes, absolutely. Um, this ties in really 
really nicely with the question I just answered actually because in my class alone I think we have four or five um, students that are um, uh, parents and being unmarried without children it's already so so hard um, getting through medical school so you know I can't imagine um, on top of that um, you know having a partner a spouse and children you have to balance too so this support group is such such a good resource um, they are so close um, you know they have meetings regularly to check in with one another they hang out a lot um, they put on events um, just to keep everybody connected. Um, there's like a picnic coming up, a socially distanced picnic. So uh, yeah, really, really amazing resource that our school offers. All right, the next question is, does your school offer scholarships? Yeah, we offer a lot of scholarships actually. Um, there are many that are specific to the college. So um, we have to be a podiatric medical student to apply. Um, so that's kind of nice because it makes the pool a little smaller and really increases your chances of um, winning the scholarship. Many are need-based, many are, you know, based on community service or your grades, uh, an essay, just like standard um, scholarship, things like that. And then many that are um, university-wide too. So for um, people from any program to apply to. Next question is, do you need a car? Personally, um, I'd say so. Uh, I don't think SoCal is, or at least Pomona, it's not really a walking city, um, especially if you live off campus. It just makes things easier um, to you know, be able to get to school, get your groceries, um, go home and visit family, stuff like that. Is there any job that students can take on as first year students in the school, such as peer tutors and note takers? Yeah, every year they look for them. Um, and yeah, there are definitely um, chances to um, you know get jobs like that. That, um, as a student. All right, so the next question is, how often are certain facilities open for students? Our uh, main buildings, um, the ones that have the study rooms in them, open as early as seven and close as late as 11 or 12. We don't have any areas that are like 24 hours, um, but they're open on weekends, uh, just holidays that they're closed. And the anatomy lab, same thing. Um, you do have to go in there and practice and um, you know uh, study in there a lot. So that's also open from 7 a.m to um, pretty late at night, um, though a lot of people choose not to go at night. So it is kind of a prime time <laughs> to go and learn um, for some people. All right, so that concludes most of the questions that prospective students tend to ask. As for why I chose Western, I thought it was a huge advantage that all our courses, lectures, exams um, are with our DO counterparts. And this really ties into a big Western UCPM philosophy, which is to train assess physicians first and then foot and ankle specialists second. So it was really nice for the um, two programs to basically pool our resources together and we really were seldom apart except for our podiatry specific course and their OMEM class. So that was really nice. I took along my golden retriever and Western isn't just a med school, it also has you know physical therapy, optometry, dentistry, um, and veterinary medicine. So um, at times when my dog needed a checkup or um, this one time when it was uh, actually a small emergency I had, I also had a mandatory class at the time. And so <laughs> instead of having to choose between my dog <laughs> um, and uh, class, the clinic knows that, you know, there are a lot of students there. So you can pretty much just drop off your dog or cat in the morning. You know, they run their labs, do whatever they have to do. Um, and then you pick them up after class. And they also give a discount to um, students. So that's really nice too. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you guys um, in deciding uh, which podiatry school you want to go to. Um, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you.